All right, quick video for you today. I want to show you this controller that I just received from Audio Imperia. Audio Imperia makes virtual instruments. I've got a video on some of their orchestral instruments, which I'll put a link to in the description. So make sure you check that video because I go into some detail with that software. And the reason this is kind of applicable right now is because there is a sale on uh, up to 70% if you get a whole bunch of their instruments. So I'll put a link to that in the description. It's an affiliate link. So you'll help me out if you do go pick up that collection, but make sure it's right for you. Don't just go pick it up because it's on sale. Check what the orchestral stuff is like. Do some research on some of the other instruments. We'll play around with some of them today. And then I'm also going to show you this little controller here called Fade. It's not f -v -d -d -d, and it's a very simple controller that happens to fit perfectly in my studio. As you know, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with the wood stuff. I love the synthesizers with the wood on it and laptop case as well from a company called Glitty, which I'll put a link to in the description. It's not an affiliate link, but I just love their stuff. Anyways, Fade is just a really nice MIDI controller. It's not motorized faders, so these faders won't move up and down on their own, but they're 100 millimeter faders, really nice for programming in your expression and pretty much any parameter that you want to change on a virtual instrument. So we'll play around with it a little bit with some orchestral software and some other type of software and show you how you can configure it really quickly with the app. You see it's got four faders, but it's got four banks of faders as well, which you can configure with this little application. Here you can rename the controllers. So I can tap both of these buttons at the same time. And you can see that I can now read the names that I put in with the app. So what I will probably do is make some banks and have presets set up for different programs. Very sturdy quality. It's not plastic. It's metal. We got the nice real wood on the sides and then the faders just feel really smooth and uh, and the display is, is really quickly updating. So it looks like it's got a super high refresh rate. It's not super cheap, but I do feel like it is good value. Anyways, uh, that's my take on the physical part of the controller. Let's go play around with it with the software a little bit, help you decide if this is a controller you want to get down the road, or if the software that's on sale right now is something you want to pick up right now. And of course, the full disclosure, they did send me the hardware for free and the software, but they're not paying me to make the video, so I get to say whatever I want in this video. So take that for what it is, and let's go check out this hardware and the software. So we're going to be in Cubase today, and I've got a little thing that I just played in here with this library called Photosynthesis. And it's made in collaboration with a composer. The composer's name is Jeremiah Pena, probably pronounced. All of these ones, individual ones, are looking like about 50% off. And then you can get up to 70% off if you get the bundle. So I just played something in with this one. So this one is a, a rhythmic patch, this Photosynthesis library has a lot of really just interesting creative patches pads and uh, sort of organic and electronic mangled type sounds but let's look at the violins here in nucleus so first thing we should notice with fade is i've got this set to bank a and what i'm going to do with this little setup here today is leave bank a for the orchestral stuff and then we're going to use bank b for the other stuff so we're going to use that to control like a filter on something more like a synthesizer so if we go over to our violins here in nucleus you can see that i've already set up the first four faders here to be assigned to things that are already assigned in Nucleus and Jaeger. To me, that's going to make the most sense. So we've got one slider that's assigned two. And if I press these two together, we can see that this is on CC1. So this is actually the same as the mod wheel, just so that I don't have to reach over to the mod wheel as well. I can do, I can play something in and then go back and control it with these sliders after the fact and write in my automation. So the second slider is set to CC11, which is automatically set to their expression knob. And by the way, if I did want to change this, I could right click and go remove MIDI automation and assign it to something else. I could assign it to a totally different number. So that one's I've got set up to expression. This slider I've got set to the vibrato. And then this one I've got set to kind of a, a strange one. I've got it set to sample start. And that's because these libraries, and they do something really neat, which I love, they've got uh, a, an automatic delay that is on every patch because a lot of the expressive string patches, when you play a note, they start and it takes a while for the note to get to its full volume. 
And so what they've done is they've gone and made every single patch on here have the exact same amount of distance between when this, you play the note and when you actually hear the full sound. And that's called sample start. It's a setting right here. And so what I do when I work with these libraries is I turn the sample start all the way to the top. Later on, when I'm ready to go and tweak this and maybe add the expression and stuff like that, I will go and set the sample start all the way to 250 milliseconds, which is a quarter of a second. And then I'll go over to Cubase and I'll set my track delay settings to minus 250 so that anything that lines up on the grid is now going to trigger 250 milliseconds early. And all of these samples that have any kind of start time that needs, to, needs room to breathe will start at the right time. But it also means that any of my pizzicato notes or my staccato notes are also going to be in time. Because in other libraries, you might have to delay only the legato notes that start late, but then you've got your staccato stuff, which starts exactly on the beat. So it becomes a huge mess. So that's what I love about this library. To me, this is probably one of the coolest features about this library. So anyways, I'm going to set my sample start all the way to zero milliseconds. Now when I play, it's hitting on the beat. It's I can play it in real time and later on get those func that functionality. OK, so that's enough about sample start. That's in Nucleus and Jaeger, which is super cool. And then that's it. So that's all I've got set on my fade controller. So if I go over to the fade controller right here, you can see that this is where you can go and configure what your device is doing, what it's sending. And so here you can see I set this CC to uh, 1. All you have to do is go up and down like this to set the actual numbers. You can set the maximum and minimum right here. I've also gone and set a little thing that says key switch 1, 2, 3, and 4 to these buttons right here. So these buttons can send note information. So right now if I press the first button, it switches to the first key switch and so on and so forth. And I do find that you really do have to push these buttons down. Some of them you have to really give them a good press. And it's a nice way for me to just kind of work with the patch. Maybe turn the dynamics down a bit. And just a note on dynamics versus expression. From what I understand in the manual, dynamics is actually crossfading between different sample levels. And then expression is more like a volume within that. So you can actually get kind of two levels of volume out of this if you brought them both down. Now you really have a lot of room to grow to get things more expressive. So that's it. So I've got my key switches and I've got my faders. And if I wanted more faders, if I wanted to assign more, which I probably wouldn't, I can go over to the next bank and start assigning some more knobs. And so let's say if I wanted to adjust the amount of reverb, I could right click on this one. And let's just remove that for now. I had something on there. I'm going to go learn MIDI CC and I could use this one now to adjust the amount of reverb. And let's set it to pizzicato. And let's go back over to the other bank with reverb. Let's go now and just play something in with this. And then we'll try some of the other libraries out. And we'll try one more setup with the fade where we can configure things a little bit differently. So I'm going to go over and we'll put in some violins. So now I'm just going to write in some expression for those violins. And I'm going to do the same thing with the dynamics and see if we can get a little bit more expression going on here. Okay, so now let's go to Nucleus and add some cellos in there. So I'll just go right in some expression.
Okay, so next we're gonna put in some drums. And this one comes from Artifact Reanimate, which is one of their percussion libraries, which you can check out uh, in the link, of course. So what I could do with this one is go in and just right click on any one of these parameters. And I'm going to go over to bank B here. And we're just going to right click on the cutoff here and go learn MIDI CC automation. And now I've got filter assigned to this one right here. Now I can go over to fade and go to bank B. And let's call that first one. We're just going to call that filter. And if we wanted to, we could call this one resonance, upload that to fade. We see it change right on there. And then now when I go over here, right click on this one and go assign that to the resonance. Very easy to go in and configure a setup for your instruments. And if there's always something that you're doing like filter and resonance, it makes sense to have that assigned to a second bank. And then now you open up your instrument and just assign those parameters to it. And now you're controlling them right away. And you have the feedback of the display itself showing you what the parameter is, which it, to me makes it much more useful than other controllers where you just have to remember which, uh, which knob is assigned to what. We're going to go to uh, something else in Artifact Reanimate. Let's go to, let's try one of the beats per minute ones. So let's put that one in. Okay, so last thing we'll do is just add a little bit of this clavier instrument. And this one's just pianos. Let's try this red planet piano. If I go over to bank A, I should be able to control this main one with this slider, which is just like the mod wheel. All right, just gonna play out with some clavier piano in here. Just give you a little taste of some of the stuff that's on sale right now from Audio Imperia. And I hope you enjoyed this little intro to Fade. I'm excited about using it in my productions. I'm gonna be doing a lot more orchestral stuff over the next year. And uh, so I'm gonna really be putting this thing to use and maybe I'll do a review on it after using it for a few months. So thanks so much to Audio Imperia for sending it over and make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell if you're new here and we'll see you in the next video.